What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the uh, Quarantine Chronicles. Hello, everybody at home. Hope you're settling in to your quarantine. Hope you're sheltered. Hope you're doing whatever the fuck you want to do with all your free time. It is free time. Matter of fact, you're getting paid for your time now. Government handing out checks. It's not even free time. You working from home. You doing nothing from home. Life is good. Put your cups up. Let's take a sip together before we start this off. Because guys, guys, we have some great news. Some exciting news. Let's take a sip first. I'm sipping on agua. Mm. Just because... It's a global pandemic doesn't mean there isn't a tiny bit of positivity in it, okay? Doesn't mean there isn't a little light at the end of the tunnel. Doesn't mean good things cannot come out of the darkness. We have some lovely, lovely news. Matter of fact, it's so important, this news. Mark, I'm going to ask you to just pause the audio slightly. Everybody say what up to Mark, everybody. That's Marky Gagnon, Mark Gagnon on Instagram, okay? Um, let, let's, let's pause for a second and let's rejoice because finally, finally, we know the coronavirus is bougie, right? We know the coronavirus is a little bottle rat just trying to hang out with famous people. Coronavirus is kind of like a paparazzi in a way, right? Because you don't really want anything to do with uh, regular folk, you know, just famous people and Italians. And then, you know, the name paparazzi or the word paparazzi is an Italian word. So I get it. <laughs> I think that what's happening with this Corona is it's finally realized its power. And sometimes even a villain uses its power for good. You know, you ever watch like uh, one of those Marvel movies, right, where Magneto's doing horrible shit the entire time and he wants to, you know, end the world or at least end humanity. And then he goes, wait a minute. Actually, in order for us all to survive, in order for us all to, th to thrive, I have to use my powers for good in this moment. Right. And finally, the coronavirus has reached that level of maturity where it goes with great power comes great responsibility. I got to start picking off people that need to be picked off, that need to be humbled, okay? And you know who it targeted? James Dolan. Jimmy D, <laughs> okay? Jimmy D, the owner of the Knicks got coronavirus and he's old and he likes to smoke, okay? He's in a jazz band. You can't be in a jazz band without smoking. We got a shot, baby. Now, I'm not wishing death on nobody, okay? I can't even say that with a straight face. If for whatever reason James Dolan happened to pass, that would be sad. He's got family that cares about him. He's got 19-year-old girls that can no longer uh, hang out around tables at One Oak and Avenue. So they rely on this man for their survival during this global pandemic. $1,200 from the government isn't going to cut it. It's not, okay? These girls need to be fed. They need new purses, okay? They need to pay rent. For that apartment they share with 12 other girls that want to be models in New York City. You know the hustle, James. He's out there. He's got it. It's a positive case. And there's a chance that he could sell the Knicks. I don't know how coronavirus is going gonna, is gonna to pull this off. But maybe, just maybe, the coronavirus can humble James Dolan enough where he realizes... He realizes the pain and suffering inside himself, and he goes, wait a minute. This pain and suffering I've experienced, have I been bestowing this upon New Yorkers for decades? Have I been making it hard for them to breathe? Have I been making them cough up a lung? Have I been making Knicks fans need ventilators for decades? Am I the coronavirus? Yes, James. Yes, you are, and it's been far too long. So maybe in this moment of extreme humility where you've been tapped, the grim reaper of diseases, and maybe not at all, we'll get to that later, has tapped you on the shoulder, sickle in hand, and said, James, you have a decision to make. I may liberate you of this disease, but you need to liberate New Yorkers of the disease that you are. Mm hosting, owning, and dictating 
what type of seasons we will have for our future. I want a glorious future for you, James Dolan. I want a glorious future for us as well. And I believe it's time for you to part, part ways with that virus and for us to part ways with our virus, okay? Go be the jazz musician you were destined to be. You cannot be a billionaire jazz musician. It does not work out that way. Okay, you need to be poor. You need to be suffering. You need to be having the blues. Holy shit, is that why you contracted it? Is that why? Did you contract the coronavirus on purpose because you needed something to write jazz music about? <laughs> Did you need some blues, James? Is that what this whole thing has come down to? Well, if you need some blues, I can tell you a quick way to get it. Stop owning the Knicks and just become a regular fan. Because the blues will ensue. So please do the right thing. That's right. Do the right thing. <clears throat> do the right thing, Spike. That's for you. Do the right thing, James. And get rid of that team. Put your focus on your health. Not only your physical health, but the health of this organization. Now let's get this show fucking started, everybody. I came through hot. I came through riled up. I mean, well, that's an opening, bro. Hey, bro, we here. <laughs> We're not playing the games. I had a day off. Mark, I had a day off. I had a time to think. I had time to sit in quarantine. You know what I realized? I realized that we didn't uh, go through quarantine like all of you at home. We've been coming to work every single day, working 10, 12 hours a day at the studio, grinding. We weren't experiencing the quarantine. And how the fuck could I talk about it? How could I give you guys advice if I wasn't going through what you guys were going through, that pain, that suffering, that boredom. And you know what I realized after my one day of quarantine? Y'all need to shut the fuck up. That shit was amazing, okay? <laughs> I had an amazing day with my girlfriend. She baked oatmeal, chocolate chip, cherry, dried cherry cookies. I had it with some ice cream in the middle. Ate four meals. Watch Ozarks. The Outsiders. Did some scientific research about how I was right about light. <laughs> some of you were in the comments saying that I sound like an absolute idiot and I get it. I was maybe wrong about certain things, but I was right about light. You can capture light. What the fuck do you think solar power is? Okay. Mm. Now, maybe you're not capturing light in its essence. Maybe the light isn't in there like a light bulb, but the energy is in there. And from that energy, you can light something up. How the fuck do you think someone thought of solar power? It's probably the exact same thing. I was thinking, why can't we capture this light? Boom, light is captured. Put it on your roof. Electricity bill paid for by the sun. Okay? Sometimes you got to think outside the box. There was another part of that sentence, but I didn't get there. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll be, I ran out of energy for that sentence. That's a fact. Here's the reality. I was right about the solar power. Did I sound like an idiot doing it? 100%. I don't give a fuck. What was I wrong about? The air thing. I admit I was wrong about the air thing. I sounded absolutely retarded. I was looking back to it, but I didn't understand you could compress air. How the fuck can you compress air? How can you put more air in air? <laughs> Okay, you can't put more orange juice in orange juice, <laughs> right? You got a set amount of orange juice and don't say, well, from concentrate. Yeah, I understand, but that's missing some water and shit. You can't put more orange juice in orange juice. How the fuck are you going to put more air in air? Turns out air ain't like orange juice. I learned that yesterday. Sometimes you got to ask questions. Sometimes you got to get to the bottom of things. That's what we're doing, okay? That's what we're doing with this goddamn show. I got to the bottom of this celebrity shit. I understand why celebrities all got coronavirus and nobody else does. I figured this shit out. Y'all want to know? Mark, you want to know? Yeah. Why are celebrities getting coronavirus? They're just trying to quarantine and not have their fucking poor family come over. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If you know the quarantine is coming, right? You're Prince Albert. What the fuck is the Prince of uh, Prince Charles? Prince Albert, when you pierce your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you got a Prince Albert, you got other problems, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I need more space. Yeah. I need Little, a little more space. In these jeans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, if you're some prince, you're, you're Idris Elba, right? You're some rich uh, Hollywood celebrity. You own the Knicks, 
Okay, everybody and their mother, your cousins, your uncles, everybody is like, yo, if we got to be quarantined, we got to lock down. Let's just call up Uncle Dolan. Let's just call up Uncle Idris. Right. Let's just call up every Hollywood celebrity that says they got it. Let's call them up and let's quarantine with them because they got a fucking mansion. They got a full pantry. Be honest. In times of quarantine, you go into the full pantry guy. If you have a full pantry, that's whose house I'm going to be at. Whitney Cummings. Mm. I'm going to be at Whitney's house. If I have to lock down somewhere, it's going to be a Whitney. You remember Whitney's pantry? Yeah, it was a room. A room with just snacks. <laughs> I want to be in a room with just snacks. How much dried mango can you fit? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and it's not enough. Okay? It's not enough. I risked my life going to Whole Foods last night for a dried mango. I took the motorcycle there. Real, real I am legend shit. Motorcycle? It's an electric bike, but in these times of pandemic, it really doesn't matter, okay? It's dark out. <laughs> Motherfuckers don't know. They just see me zooming. <laughs> point is, point is, <laughs> I'm zooming, bro. I'm not vrooming. Vrooming would be the actual motorcycle. Yeah. But zoom. <laughs> That's the sound. God, is such a pussy ass sound that thing makes. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to growl when I'm at the light next to somebody so they don't just think I'm a mmm. Bro, you got to get a Bluetooth speaker. Yes. That's genius. You get a Bluetooth speaker of the growl sound. Oh, that's great. Point being, if you got money and you got a nice place, you don't want your whole fucking family coming to you to suck off your teeth during the pandemic. So you go, hey, I got it. I got it. All of them go, oh, shit, I can't be around that motherfucker. He's sick. He got the coronavirus. We got to stay home so we don't stay and spread it. And mm. then you call them like, yo, I'm doing the best I can. I'm going to go mail you some dry mango, some coconut flakes or whatever the fuck. Yeah. You think Tom Hanks is trying to spend coronavirus with Chet? Son, me no want no time with Chet. <laughs> me no want to spend no time with Chet. <laughs> me want to spend some time with Rita. <laughs> <laughs> me want some daga Rita. Daga, 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 daga Rita. <laughs> Real talk, bro. You think that they want to be quarantined with Chet? Thinking of new tattoos to put on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. Chet, come on, Tom. <laughs> How you not going to order no red stripe for the quarantine? <laughs> How you don't know you're going to order no beef patties so or no, no raw tea? So no oxtail for the quarantine. <laughs> quarantine. The quarantine? <laughs> quarantine. <laughs> Sounds like a name of somebody. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? Who's quarantine? Quarantine. Get back to your room. <laughs> quarantine. <laughs> Stop playing tetherball, quarantine. Back to your room. <laughs> Point is, we're on to you, celebs. And you know what? I don't blame you, bro. I really don't blame you. You only need 100 fucking family members at your house during this shit. Take some time off. I get it. But here's the question that got me thinking. I'm starting to get conspiratorial, Mark. And if I get too crazy, you stop me. Yeah, I'm going to pull you back. Pull me back if I get too crazy. By the way, I just asked the most conspiratorial person I know to pull me back when I get too conspiratorial. So we're not going nowhere. <laughs> okay? We're just going to start scratching the surface. Mark's going to give me a look like, yeah, I think you're on to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if I tap into it, Mark, you got to unleash the beast. All right. Here's what I'm thinking. And this might sound crazy, Roll with me on this. Just roll with me on this. Just roll with me on this. That's all I'm saying. I have a theory. I, hmm, coronavirus might not be as bad as everybody is saying it is now. Keep with me. Whoa. Keep with me. Stay Whoa. with me here. Listen, it might, but it might not. But there's no way for us to tell why. Because the majority of us can't get tested. Right now, the only people that are getting tested are the people showing extreme symptoms. Not little symptoms. Extreme symptoms, right? So the only people getting tested are extreme symptoms. Those people either end up dying or they end up not with it. Or some have it and they end up recovering. Right? But we're just talking about the extreme symptoms. Okay? Because there's so few tests out there that are available. That doesn't mean that you and I don't have it. Mark could have it. I could have it. You watching at home. You could have it. Okay? 
but we'll never know because we don't have extreme enough symptoms to be tested, right? Now, if there was only a group of people that didn't have extreme symptoms at all, that could still get tested for whatever reason, we could look at them and see how deadly the virus is, truly. Oh yeah, blue checks. Oh yeah, famous people. You don't find it curious that literally every single famous person that has this virus has said, I'm not really showing any symptoms, I'm pretty good. You don't find that a little weird that every famous person that has it is okay? No ventilator, no hospital, just chilling. Idris Elba with his beautiful ass girlfriend, just chilling. Tom Hanks, Rita Wilson, chilling. <laughs> Lamb back, cooling. By the beachside. <laughs> right, literally everybody chilling. Nobody affected, nobody on a ventilator, nobody fucked up. And those are the only people in society that don't show symptoms that are that bad. James Dolan literally said, I don't really have any symptoms. I've just tested positive for it. That leads me to believe that way more of us have it already. It could be that you, me, Mark, whoever else has the virus already, mm. okay? We will never know because we'll never get tested because we're not famous enough or violently sick enough. So therefore... This virus that we think if we get it, it's going to send us to the hospital, it isn't the case. Potentially, it isn't the case at all. Matter of fact, we could already have it, and it just doesn't have that strong enough effect on us and the majority of people. Therefore, we'll never know, and we're good. So are we shutting down the entire global economy for something that we already have? Is the curve already flattened? I don't know. But then you can spread them more. Go. Keep talking. So if you have symptoms. Talk me back. So if you don't have symptoms, but yep. you have it, you are the greatest risk factor oh, to be spreading it. Mark, thank you for pointing that out. So now you're saying that we could spread the virus to those people that are susceptible. Right. You're the most dangerous if you have it and have no symptoms. And I'm out there in the world. And we do know that it is dangerous to a certain subset, a uh, certain group subset of society mm -hmm. it is factually dangerous to them it is killing some people yes yeah. boomers the boomers yeah <laughs> we should call them the kaboomers because they are <laughs> 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 no but it is and not only just boomers my mom thinks she had it my brother thinks she had it and they recovered so there mm -hmm. are tons of boomers that are getting it and recovering it's not like they act like it was a death sentence it was like 70 or hey, are you 75 years old or 80 you get it you're dead not the case, mm -hmm. right? So, it's a specific group of people. Maybe boomers that also have certain ailments, right? Maybe boomers that have smoked their entire lives. Maybe boomers that have, you know, fucking some shitty, some lung disease or whatever, some heart disease, whatever it is, some respiratory illness. Maybe those are the people that are at risk. And I do understand if I'm not showing any symptoms and I'm dapping up some boomer that works at Walmart, maybe I could give it to him and then maybe he dies. I get that, and we need to be careful about that. That being said, if the whole idea of this is to eventually have the whole population get it, the herd immunity, that's what we're doing. Flatten the curve doesn't mean we get rid of it. Flatten the curve means we just all get it slowly, correct? Correct. So if we all get it slowly, those motherfuckers are going to get it anyway. Now, I understand all of you watching right now are going, right now we're just trying to slow it so we have enough hospital beds for these people. 100%, I get it. I'm all about slowing it. But I do feel... We've sensationalized it a bit to the point where people are afraid to even fucking look at each other. Mm. Have you noticed this? Like I saw, I saw the first confrontation, the first six foot confrontation. Talk to me. So it's outside of Whole Foods. There's a whole line spanning around the block. Mm -hmm. And this girl turns around to these two uh, Hispanic ladies behind her. Yeah, you tell me this is good. And she goes, guys, can we just do six feet? <laughs> And the woman literally goes, oh, I see, mira, mira, and does six feet in Walks front of the other. Walks six feet to her? And shows her, yeah, we're six feet. So she walked within the six feet? Yeah. So this stupid bitch online actually made that woman come closer to her? 
Yeah, I mean, granted, she was using her tiny Puerto Rican feet to walk, but <laughs> she showed. She's like, look, six feet. <laughs> Puerto Ricans, y'all do have the cutest feet. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> of, of any group of people, the most cute, adorable little feet. It's like what Asians have always wanted by binding them. Like Puerto Ricans just have naturally. <laughs> six foot three inch Puerto Rican got size eight shoe. Let's be honest. Okay. Bro, I might be Puerto Rican, bro. Son, you might. <laughs> it's impossible in New York to get Air Force One size nine. <laughs> <laughs> Size nine here for one's gone. <laughs> Yo, yeah, it's a it's a different thing. There's something that I've noticed out there. Like, I think that the coronavirus is turning us all into school shooters. <laughs> and I don't mean like we're actually gonna shoot up a school, but we're experiencing what a school shooter archetype goes through. Which is what? Which is loneliness around people. That is the most severe form of loneliness. Mm. I asked Mark yesterday, I go, Mark, do you miss doing stand-up? Mark said, yes, I miss it. But what'd you say? I don't remember. You said, I miss it, but it makes it easier that nobody else is doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're not talking about those stupid fucking live shows with no audience. <laughs> Stop it. So listen to Tim Dillon and his point of view on all that immediately. He's absolutely right. Now, there's we're talking about when other people, right, aren't doing the thing that you're not doing, it feels okay. For example, if we know on Christmas nobody else is working, we feel fine not working, right? If we know nobody else is going to the gym, we feel fine not going to the gym, right? But this is what happens, and this is what had been created. The school shooter goes to school every single day, right? He's alone. He is, he's lonely. He has no friends. But he sees everyone else with friends. He sees everyone else socially interacting. He sees everyone else have people. He doesn't. He is relatively extremely lonely because of that, right? And that is painful every single day. That's what the virus is causing us to do is completely break all human connection, right? You walk around, you go to fucking Whole Foods, go to the grocery store. People don't even look at each other. My girl pointed out an interesting thing. She smiled at this uh, cashier at uh, Whole Foods and like thanked her and said like uh, some kind of joke. And the cashier didn't notice that my girl was smiling. Why? Because she's wearing a mask. We're covering up our facial movements right the nuances the little things that help us connect a nod a smile right you can't blow someone a kiss i don't know when you would really do that anymore it's the <laughs> fucking 50s you can't cat call anymore yeah, it's so much harder to cat call bro we need to do that sketch cat call during the coronavirus <laughs> six feet away <laughs> hey ma come here but not too close <laughs> but right but like literally the little things that you would do busting a joke with somebody you're not doing it people don't want any interaction bumping into someone you kind of knew, right? Now, you don't ever stop someone you kind of knew and have a little talk. You're like, I just got to go home. I got to get out of this supermarket. Any social interaction you have on the street, first of all, there's almost none of them because almost nobody's on the street. But when you are, you're ignoring these people. You're isolating. You want nothing to fucking do with them. We're, it's really like stripping of us, us of our humanity. It's stripping of us our connectivity. It's nice going out in the world and seeing people go through something you're going through. Sometimes it's nice just knowing someone is exhausted like you are. Like you ever just see something happen and then you look to someone else to see if they also saw it and share a moment. You see a fat person fall and you're like, uh -huh, and you look and someone else is going, uh -huh, and you had a nice moment where there was connectivity. There's none of that. We're ignoring each other completely. You feel fucking alone. And the difference between alone and lonely is how you feel inside. Some people are okay being alone, right? Those people are alone. The people who are not okay being alone and now they're forced to be alone, they're lonely. And that's when shit gets dark. That's when shit gets, gets a little creepy, man, because you're forced to deal with who you are, right? A lot of people out there going, I'm bored. I'm bored right now. I'm bored. Duval said this brilliantly. He's like, you've always been bored. You just didn't realize it. You've been distracting yourself. You've been keeping yourself busy to avoid your boredom. A lot of people just can't sit with themselves. A lot of people can't sit down, relax, and enjoy a day. It's difficult. We're actually not built for that. We're built to be out there, do shit, move, constantly move, move, move. There's been entire cultures that are wrapped around the idea of not doing. 
right? Yoga. Just breathe. Why don't you not do some shit? Stop desiring. Stop wanting, right? It's a very difficult thing for us all to go through. And the fact that we all have to go through it without each other makes it that much more difficult. We've, we've ripped any kind of community apart. We know that people are there, but they're not, right? Real life has become social media. You see the people around, but you're not touching them. You see the people and what they're doing, but you're not there for what they're doing. Right? It's very rare. Why do you think Instagram Live has become so popular now? Instagram Live has always been around, but why is it so popular now? It's a shared experience. People are craving shared experiences. If I can't be with you physically, I can experience something with you in the moment live. I'll smile when you're smiling. I'll sing when you're sing, singing. I'll laugh when you're laughing. That's the closest thing people can come to to that connectivity that we fucking crave. That's why live is exploding. You don't have to watch something live. You can watch it later. You can watch it when it's a post. But we desire live. Matter of fact, we should do this live. What do you think about that, Mark? Yeah, like on YouTube? Yeah, let's do this YouTube live. Yeah, we got to do that for the next one. Yeah, we'll do this next YouTube live. We'll post when we're going to put it up. but like, Or when we'll go live. But still, it's like we're craving that fucking connectivity. In whatever way and shape and form that we can. We need it. You know, it's it's a crazy shift. Live is literally in the name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be alive. To be alive. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking Yeah, man. It's a fascinating, it's a fascinating thing to see. Like you get to be exposed. It's a really cool time because I think if you make it through this time, you learn a lot about yourself, what you need to survive, and what you need to fill yourself emotionally. Like how much you relied on distraction and how much you didn't. How much you enjoy being with yourself and how much you don't. And what you can change about yourself to uh, or shift around to, to get some sort of um, calm during that time. Like right now you might realize, oh shit, I'm kind of an anxious person. I just never realized that because I was always doing things. Right? So instead of being afraid of all these things you're going to find out about yourself, let that be your challenge during quarantine. Let that be your workout. Remember before when we can go to the gym, we're like, you know what? I want to be able to bench press my weight. Bench press your weight emotionally. How do you get to a point where you could just be still? What do you need to do to do that? You need to change your diet. You need to exercise a little bit more. And let's be honest, exercising at home fucking sucks. It sucks. (laughs) I know we like to act like we can get the same thing. We can't. It fucking sucks. Okay? I've, I've been trying to do it. I just said, fuck it. We went to the gym in my girl's building. We don't care. Put on some fucking plastic gloves, hit that treadmill, wiped it down with Lysol like some hypochondriac. This is the first time in my life I've ever wiped down gym equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I know Equinox and Crunch has been telling me to do that shit for years. I never did. I thought it was suckers that did that shit. And I feel even more so that now. But I got to do it. So I don't get this Rona. <laughs> I'm not going to get this Rona, man. Do you think that you were distracting yourself before? 100%. What have you you learned about you? I've learned two things. I've learned, one, I do distract myself. I distract myself with work. And I think I'm one of the lucky people that have, like, found healthy things to distract myself with, you know. Um, I've learned the value of exercise, but I already knew that. But I already knew that. But another thing that I learned that was really comforting yesterday is, like, and this is also... Like, for example, when I, me and my girl spent the, spent the day yesterday and it was fucking dope. And, uh, I'm not saying this now because we got in a fight a few days ago and I'm trying to like be good. I'm just being honest and I'll I'll sound like a little bitch, but I don't care. But it was, uh, it was a really nice day and we got to love on each other for like a whole day. And I realized that's what we were missing. You know, we've been in the studio fucking 10 hours a day. Every single day, we didn't, we didn't take a single day off, every single day. And while I would go home and we'd spend time together, it wasn't the amount of time we needed given the circumstances. And I know what happens is if I'm not loved on, I don't love on more because I don't feel confident enough to love extra. So I pull back, right? And then I'm sure my girl, when she's not feeling loved on, instead of loving more, she probably pulls back. Now we're both here. We both need more love. And we're further away from the loving, right? We just had a day to like love on each other. And it was like, 
all of a sudden the confidence just kind of flowed back into the relationship. It was great. It was really nice. Now, granted, I'm sure a lot of you guys have been stuck in a house with your significant other for fucking two weeks. You're about to rip each other's head off. So you might have an opposite scenario than that. You might need the space, right? But for me, it was a really interesting thing that was that I learned about a relationship is that we actually thrive with time together. We're actually better if we're investing enough time together. And when we're not, there's an insecurity, right? Because we're not filling each other up the way we're used to filling each other up. It was a really cool thing to, to think. What about you, man? What did you learn? Hmm. Learn about myself. I don't really know. I mean, I, I still keep myself busy because anytime I uh, have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. That's when I always have the desire, the compulsion to want to distract myself with something. Yeah. So yeah. I just have a note where I put all the things that I want to do. Yeah. When I have shit to do. Yeah. And then now whenever I have free time, I just go to the note and I'm like, oh, yeah, I did want to do that. But what about having free time and just doing nothing in that free time? Oh, yeah, I like that. And so you can do that quite easily? You can just do nothing? Yeah. Eh. You don't need to achieve something or, or, or finish a task or constantly be... Mm. I mean, I guess I do in the nothingness. Like, I like, I don't know, read something or like... You're always consuming, I've noticed about you. Kind of, yeah. You're, you're either reading something or listening to a podcast or you're constantly filling yourself. And it's, it's really interesting to watch because you're... You're so filled with information. I remember I asked you either yesterday or a couple of days ago, a couple of days about like, what is your information? You have a really interesting information cycle, like how you find out about something. That thought was really cool. And because I was curious, how do you consume all this? Where I've noticed that like, I'll consume shit that is not beneficial because it's just a form of distraction. Mm. Like, I could use that consumption time to learn, but I'm actually trying to not consume anything. Like, when I'm scrolling on Twitter and Instagram, I'm not doing it for, like, research purposes. I'm not really learning anything. I'm testing the waters about, like, what, you know, what, what the feeling is of the time a bit. Mm-hmm. But I'm not getting better at anything. Right. You know? And I often think, like, why don't I use that time? Why don't I put pressure on myself instead of scrolling on Instagram and Twitter? Like, why am I not reading an audio, uh, listening to an audio book or like reading something else? Do that. But maybe my time need, maybe my brain needs a certain amount of time to just mindlessly distract itself. Maybe if I'm on all the time, I'm less. I think mindless distraction isn't bad. That's why I'm like an advocate for like reality TV. Okay. And stuff like that. Like, go on. I think there are certain times where it's good just to consume garbage because. I just think it like occupies your brain with nothing and it's able to like gives it a break. Yeah, kind of let you meditate in like a like a contrived way. You got to put your brain on neutral. And I think that those types of shows or that type of distraction every once in a while you're just like, "Okay, let me just fucking let me let me let me just tune out for a bit, but still keep you going." Like, I feel like almost sometimes your brain is kind of like one of those cars where, like, you can't turn it off because you won't get it back on again. <laughs> you know, like a car with, like, some shitty engine or whatever where it's just like, yeah, just leave that motherfucker on. Or, like, you know what it is? It's like a car in, like, Edmonton, uh, Canada in the winter <laughs> where you leave it on during the night because if you turn it off, it'll actually freeze. Yeah. Like, maybe your brain is that. Maybe you need – like, even when you're meditating, you're not really shutting your brain down. You're not turning it off. You're putting it in the most – neutral state stuff comes in stuff comes out in app I'm, it's not really processing but it's not off maybe it doesn't ever go off but think about it, when you sleep your brain dreaming acti- your brain activity goes up up wait is it really yeah i think like the your neural frequency goes down but, but like your brain is still processing and synapses are firing that's like rapid eye movement like your mm. eyes are like looking around like your brain doesn't ever stop so why much. we shouldn't stop it we shouldn't be trying to stop it. We should just be trying to park it, put that bitch in neutral in whatever way works for you. Now, if it's in neutral for too long, probably bad. Probably needs to exercise just like we do. Probably needs to go through the motions, but but yeah, we'll, we'll figure out that fucking brain diet. We had, I know we had a couple Corona hacks that um, I want to give you guys because what time are we at? Because I want to do, I want to make sure we're staying on time. Uh, I think we're almost at 30. Almost at 30? Okay. I think pretty much at 30 now. We got a couple Corona hacks, and then we're going to get out of here. But uh, let's scroll up just because there's a couple. Might, might have been one more thing I want to get to. 
uh, maybe down, 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 down. Uh, okay, actually, fuck it. Let's go to the Corona, corona hacks. So I got sent this article from my man Tal. Tal's been hooking me up with a lot of um, cool resources, especially for this podcast right now, uh, this show whatever this is. Uh, but if we scroll down, so basically there's a bunch of streaming services that are giving away their services for free for like next month or two months. And I think it's kind of dope. If you want to utilize any of these, go for it. Uh, scroll up just a little bit more. Just so we can, okay. So uh, if you're trying to read books, uh, Scribed, S-C-R-I-B-D. It's an ebook, audiobook subscription service offering free 30-day trial, give you access more than a million titles. Go get that. Amazon Kindle has unlimited uh, shit uh, for two months. Uh, free subscription, uh, stream movies and television for free. You go to Shutter, uh, basically a streaming site dedicated to like thriller type stuff. Uh, also, movies anywhere. Another thing, NFL. You want to watch some uh, football? I don't know why you would want to watch games that have already happened, but fucking go for it. They got an NFL Game Pass. They're extending their complimentary access. They should because there's nothing to watch on it. But whatever. Uh, this is an interesting thing. Download Google Chrome extension uh, Netflix Party. And basically, it allows you to watch movies with a group of people simultaneously. And gets back to what we were talking about, how we want to experience things together. That's a pretty cool idea. I like that. Also, Sling TV, offering free access to select on-demand movies, television shows, ABC News Live. Um, go check that out. Also, if you want to listen to music... Uh, New York space, uh, New York City based Metropolitan Opera launched nightly Met Opera Streams. So they're doing that. Uh, there's been a lot of musicians doing uh, live streams on their Instagram lives of them actually playing their concerts, which is kind of cool because you could, you know, get involved in something that's happening in the moment with these other people. And again, we want that connectivity. We want those things that are happening live. Um, we're going to put the link to this maybe in the bio or uh, what's the name of the article so we can. Uh, What's it? A running guide to services now free or discounted in response to coronavirus. And it is from what what uh, periodical? Mm -hmm. It's a wire cutter. So if you just uh, look at the wire cutter ad ad article about running guide to services, et cetera, we'll probably put in the link. Um, go check that out. There's going to be a bunch more free shit out there. Time to distract you. This is the time to do yeah. it. There's another one that I uh, that I use. Go. It's a lot of people don't have TV. Yeah. So you're able to watch TV on your computer for free, and it's completely legal. And what is it? So basically, Stanford does a research project where they want to observe people's uh, consumption habits. Okay. So basically, they I don't know how they chalked up the contract, but if you go to puffer.stanford.edu, okay. put in like your email or whatever, you can access all basic like uh, cable. Get all out of here. Computer. And it's like all high res. Like How long have you been doing this? Uh, for a while. That's how I, that's how I watched The Bachelor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing with me now. <laughs> Fucking dick. <laughs> you just thought to share this with us? I mean, my fault. I thought <laughs> I figured you had TV. <laughs> that's been another episode of whatever this is called. Uh, go check that out, man. Thrive during this time. Enjoy it. Uh, if you get the Rona, you get the Rona. You will uh, beat it. I pray that you will beat it and hopefully you don't pass it on to too many people. Oh, I like the music coming back on and we're here and this has been another one. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for spreading the word. I'm glad you fucking with it. And we're going to go live probably uh, tomorrow. We'll post the time that we do it. Peace, love. Yer.